my parents at Christmas, uh, both Irish, I love having Irish parents, I love coming from an Irish family, it's so much fun. Um, I was going to do a gig in Manchester two weeks ago, and on a Thursday afternoon, my dad calls me up and goes, here, Gareth, I need you to come home immediately. And I was like, have you hurt yourself? What's wrong? Has something gone wrong? And he went, well, no, you know your mother's away. And I said, yeah. He said, well, all of the things that she left me to eat, I've eaten them. So, like, Dad, uh, I've got to go in Manchester. I haven't got time for this. And it was like, I haven't been able to get hold of your sister on the telephone, and I haven't had anything to eat since breakfast. <laughs> so I said, fine. So I go off the phone. I started looking at train times. He calls me back like 40 minutes later and goes, Ah, oh, you're fine. Go and do your gig. You're grand. I'm fine. And I said, what happened? And he said, have you heard of ready meals? <laughs> I said, yes, Dad, everyone's heard of ready meals. He goes, well, I, hadn't, I haven't been to praise. It's not my department, it's the kitchen, it's the mother's department. But I went down the shops for some fags, and I'm after talking to Tommy about my problem. And he's all these pots of dinner. <laughs> and you just buy them, and you take them home, and you put them in a the microwave like you would cocoa, and then you've heard dinner, so you're fine. I'm an independent man now at 65. <laughs> so the thing is, though, I was having a little think when I was walking back from the shop. Because the deal was that your mother would cook and clean and look after me. And I'd put up with all her fucking ways. <laughs> but now I've discovered the ready meals, I think there's a conversation we're going to have to be having when she gets back. <laughs> if that man learns how to use a Dyson vacuum cleaner, that is a 50-year marriage absolutely fucked. <laughs> It was amazing uh, a couple of years ago. You guys will probably know this. A lot of Irish people in Liverpool. Uh, my English friends down south, they didn't know when, when they were talking about legalising gay marriage in Ireland, that my English friends didn't know they'd only legalised divorce in 1996. People were like, what? And I was like, oh, yeah. I remember the day they legalised divorce. My mum came home. She slammed the kitchen door and went, well, that's another win for the devil, sure. <laughs> She's there lighting one cigarette off the back of the other. My dad's quaffing the red wine. They're stalking each other like fucking raptors in Jurassic Park going, Oh, yeah, you fucking look at me like that. I'll fucking divorce in a fucking minute. <laughs> oh, yeah, talk fucking big. I'll have this house from under you in a fucking second. <laughs> now, me and my sister had been brought up. We'd been brought up in England, so we had a lot of friends whose parents were very happily divorced, and I couldn't work out why our parents couldn't be happily divorced. So after a while, I plucked up the courage to ask my mum, what's the problem with divorce? And she wheeled around on me with this face of thunder and went, when you're in, you're in. <laughs> you don't go changing the rules of a game halfway through. <laughs> we have been tolerating each other for 30 years because that's the game. And now they don't have to. That is fucking cheating. <laughs> my parents were miserable. I am miserable, and I don't see why you shouldn't have to be fucking miserable. It was a beautiful upbringing. Uh, <laughs> my parents do expert level shit to wind each other up. It's really great. Like their marriage is like a war of attrition. No one's ever going to win. They both know the enemy way too well. Like they don't have like any successful marriage. Like they don't have arguments face to face. They spawned me and my sister to operate as like a United Nations buffer zone between the two of them. <laughs> So they have arguments down the phone line through us, right? So this Christmas, my mum's birthday is at Christmas, and every year she gets a joint Christmas and birthday present. And this year, my dad bought my mum a hi-fi. Oh, sorry, little detail, she doesn't like music. <laughs> or fucking noise, as she calls it. So she calls me up on the phone and goes, bought me a fucking hi-fi. He knows I don't like music. He's in there now listening to Elton Bloody John. <laughs> I said, fine, give him the phone. So I get on the phone to Dad, and I go, Dad, you bought Mum a hi-fi? He goes, I did, yeah. <laughs> it's a very good one. <laughs> it's a bang and Allison. It's got magic doors. You wave your hand in front, and you put the CD in, and the bass response on the speakers is crazy. <laughs> I said, but Dad, she doesn't like music. And he went, yeah, I know, yeah. But it sits awful nicely on the cabinet she bought me for my birthday. <laughs> so, so fucking good.